15, and it introduces these last uh, seven vials of the wrath of God. The, up until this point, we've, we've noticed several things. We noticed the seven church ages, and uh, we saw when the rapture of the church will take place, first part of, of uh, chapter number four, and we've seen much that has been, that has been meted out to the earth. How many, how many uh, uh, tragedies have already in the tribulation have already been uh, put upon the earth? The visions of John and, uh, and the, the vision of Armageddon where the blood will run to the horse's bridle in the final battle. And as, as the Jews are hidden away in the rock city of Petra, uh, those that have believed, those that have trusted, of course, there will be those that are not that you know that will that will face everything else uh, as as they all you know as all nations battle against the Lord. But the, those Jews that have have uh, accepted the message, I was thinking today, God has given mankind every opportunity to go to heaven, uh, and people have always rebelled against the truth, and even you know, even the Old Testament, even the nation of Israel. Uh, they go for a period of, of, it usually happened in 40 year increments. They would go 40 years serving the Lord, worshiping right, doing right, and then they'd rebel against the Lord, and the Lord would have to bring some tragedy, some bring them under bondage and, uh, until they confessed, until they repented and got right with the Lord. But there, there's always been uh, God who has given man opportunity, ample opportunity, to come to know Him. In our grace age, we've had 2,000 years plus to preach the gospel and to tell everybody that we come in contact with about the saving grace of Jesus. And I fall short of that, I'll be honest with you. I fall short of, of doing all that I can. Uh, but, it, but even though the gospel has been spread widely in our country and there's still a lot to do, uh, people ignore it, people reject it. And you would think that, you know, that after we have read what's going on in the book of Revelation and how that, uh, you know, the, uh, the message is still being preached, that they can get in, that they can get, you know, that they can uh, get saved and go to heaven, they still reject that. They still reject the message of, of, of their salvation. And, and even in the last days when the 144,000 preach and when the angel uh, carries the everlasting gospel to every uh, every being, every you know, every ear will hear uh, the everlasting gospel, and every one, every person that's on planet Earth will be given an opportunity to get to get right with the Lord. And yet, what is going to happen? Many of them are going to reject. Even the midst of the of the horrible persecution that have been in, many of them are going to reject the gospel or reject the message of salvation, just as it is today. Many people reject the gospel. I. I you know, I talk to people and they'll say, well, maybe sometime. And, uh, and, and, and in my mind, knowing that I'm a child of God, in my mind, and knowing what I know, I wonder why would you put off such a thing? And then you think about the war of the, that the devil rages and the war that the uh, demons of hell rage against lost people. And all they, what, their biggest, you know, one of their biggest messages is, look what you'll give up if you get saved. And that's what people, well, you know, I'll have to quit doing this. I'll have to quit doing that. Well, I tell people, look, if you get right with the Lord, if you get saved and born again by the grace of God, you won't have to give up one thing. You'll want to give up all those things. And it won't be that you've given up anything. A preacher said one time, and I was, I was in the church listening to him, and, and he said something about made me, you know, I, I, I thought, oh, my goodness, what is in the world is he talking about? And he got to preach. He, he said, I used to be a drunk and, he, and all the things that he used to do. And he said, I'll tell you something. I got saved and I still drink as much as I want to drink. He still, I still run around as much as I want to run around. He said, I carouse as much as I want to carouse. And I thought, man, what are you telling these people? Well, in my church, I, I'd have, if I'd been a pastor, I'd have, you know. But I stuck with him and he said, the, the thing about all this is, he says, I don't want to drink. I don't want to run around. I don't want to carouse. And that was his, you know, that was the point that he was making. When you get right with the Lord and get saved, you won't want to do these things. But until, you know, until people hear the gospel message and are placed under conviction of the Holy Spirit of God, they will always listen to that lie of the devil. And even then, the, the devil will try to tell them, look, you're going to have to give up life. 
and give up living. But if, if we as believers live our lives as Christians should, and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll surely see something uh, about a Christian that they'll want to have. And we can do it. We can, we can have all the fun we want and never turn a bottle up, uh, never, never smoke a joint, and uh, do all those things that we want to do and have a happy life and not do those things because we're saved by God's grace. And God changes you on the inside. He changes your want to her. And the things you wanted to do, he changes that, and you don't want to do them no more. And so even in the last days in the book of Revelation, we see how people have rejected God. And now the, the space for uh, turning from all of that has, has gone. And these final chapters or, or this next chapter concerning the, uh, the vials of the wrath of God are some of the most horrendous times that are ever going to be poured out upon man. And that's the introduction in chapter number 15. So this basically speaks for itself, but let's, uh, let's read these verses together anyway. Verse number 1 of chapter 15, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up with the wrath of God. Now John's making the announcement of what he saw. Uh, you know, and he said he saw seven angels, and they uh, had uh, seven vials that were filled up with the wrath of God, the seven last plagues that are come on, come on the earth. Now, everything up in this point has been terrible. But from this point on, these last seven are, are just horrendous. You can't imagine uh, how, we, how evil that this is going to be, that men's going to perceive uh, this to be. And, but it's all God. Listen, God's a righteous God, and he's a just God. And what God does is right. And even if it is dealing out judgment to men, because God's not only a God of love, but he's also a God of judgment and a God of wrath. Many preachers preach today that God is just a God of love and that, that uh, if you just love God, if you love people, love everybody, then in the end you'll go to heaven. It's not that way, friend. You must be born again. People must hear the gospel and be saved. And they say, well, I don't want to face the wrath of God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now that's what the Bible teaches. But why would I want to, to tell everybody and give them a false sense of, of security uh, you know, that, uh, that if you just do good and if you just love everybody and, and these things, then, then you'll get to heaven. Uh, the Bible clearly, again, says you must be born again, but people reject that. And in these last days, people will have rejected all of that. Uh, and, and, and the day we're living, uh, we got to tell people, you know, they do have an option on where they're going to spend eternity. Uh, they'll go to heaven if they believe Jesus. They'll go to hell if they don't. And yet that is, that is uh, sa sadly not preached in our society much anymore. So as these last plagues that are, uh, that are these vials that are filled with the wrath of God are poured out upon men, they will still, they will still be determined, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that God's evil. And that, that'll be their belief that they're going to they're gonna win against God. And we know better. Even at the end of the millennial reign, there'll be that crowd that rises up and you know that crowd that rises up and says you know we're going to uh, we're going to rebel we're rebelling against God we're rebelling all of this and then that'll be the the battle of God and Magog which we will study later and verse number two and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his names Stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Now, you put yourself in, in your imagination. Now, John saw this in a vision. He saw a sea of glass, and on that sea of glass, he saw a glass that was mingled with fire. Now, you think about a sea of glass, and it mingled with, with, with fire, you know, just, just, just what you're looking at. That would be a beautiful sight, wouldn't it? If, the, you know, if that glass was reflecting fire and, and uh, not literal fire, but the reflection of fire. And as it, as it was, uh, he saw that as it was that and what a beautiful sight that would be. But think of what he sees that is, that is on that, uh, on that uh, uh, sea of glass. And as a sea of glass mingled with fire in them that hadn't got the victory uh, over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, Stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God, and playing those harps of God, such music that our ears uh, have never heard before because they had gained victory, because they had not bowed to the beast, 
For they had not bowed to the false prophet. They had not received the mark of the beast. But they had believed the testimony of the 144,000. And that angel that had uh, you know, spread the everlasting gospel, they had heard all of that and they had believed. And now their reward is that they're in heaven with the Lord. And they're standing on that sea mingled with a sea of glass mingled with fire and they're playing harps. such such wonderful music because of their joy of where they're at. And they sing the song of Moses, uh, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. So that's their song, the song of Moses of, of, of uh, deliverance and, and the song of redemption. And they sing all of these songs and, and give glory to God uh, for what he has done and, and uh, tell about his marvelous works and how he is just and true and how that he is king, uh, the, you know, the king of saints. Listen, I'll tell you something, friend. It's going to be a wonderful day. Now, you and I will be there and we'll observe this and it's going to be a wonderful time. But listen, what else is going to, going to take place? Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever. So this is a, a joyous time in heaven, but is also a sorrowful time on earth that they do, not, they do not know this. They don't know what's about to happen because why? They believe uh, this world system. They believed in the, uh, you know, the one world government. They believed in the, in the Antichrist. They've trusted that. And now they're fixed to experience the the full-blown, if we can call it that, wrath of God. The outpouring of, of God and His wrath upon the unbelievers, those that have done such horrendous things against Him, those that have rejected Him, those that have blasphemed Him, and now they're going to pay the price for all of that. And those that were martyred, those that, were, that died because of the cause of Christ and because of the uh, you know, the cause of God, those that are at, will, will be uh, avenged for all that they had went through. And so that is about to happen. It's what's going to happen. Then the last verse. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no man was able to enter to the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Now this is about to take place. Uh, this is part of the last three and a half years of the tribulation. And, and friend, as we read through these, this is going to be a, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty rapid the way these things are happening. But God's bringing everything to a finality. And he's bringing everything where all judgment is going to be meted out. And, and just soon, the, uh, God's going to come back and he's going to uh, rule the, you know, Jesus is going to come back and he's going to rule the world with a, you know, uh, uh, with a rod of iron during, you know, and, and, and during the millennial reign of Christ, we're going to rule with him. And, I, you know, the, the question has come up during that millennial reign, if those are going to rise up against God in the end, will there be sin? Sin will not be tolerated. Uh, you know, it will not be tolerated. And, and whatever the wickedness of man comes up, the, that sin just, and I don't understand how all that's going to work. Maybe you do and can explain it to me, but I know that it won't be tolerated. Will we be tempted? No, because we'll be, uh, you know, Christ in us. And, of course, we'll be, uh, have on new robes of righteousness. And we're not going to be tempted to even do anything wrong. But there will be those still in the last days. But, but, friend, I'll tell you something. I don't want to be, I'm glad I'm not going to be here. When all this has come to pass and when these seven last vials of the wrath of God are poured on. Now, let me read a couple more verses. And I'm going to read all this, but just give you some kind of idea. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. So each angel has got a, a destination on the earth, uh, the best I understand it, in where they're going to go and pour out the vials of the wrath of God. The first vial, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, 
And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. A grievous sore. You can't imagine, friend, how, how that's going to be. Uh, a festering wound. And, uh, you know, the, the closest I can come to thinking what this could be like is in the plagues upon the uh, people of Egypt uh, when, they, when they had boils upon them. Or when Job sat in, uh, you know, in the ashes and as he sat there scraping his sores with, you know, with a, with a piece of, of uh, pottery. And, uh, you know, th that was bad. But this is going to be worse than you can ever imagine. I'm glad I'm not going to be here. Why? Because of the grace of God. But remember, friend, all these that suffer such are those that have get, been given every opportunity. And they just will not. They will not. And, and today there's people that <clears throat> God has given every opportunity. <clears throat> and I've used this illustration many times. And I've used it here several times. But I, as early in ministry, when, uh, you know, there was not churches to preach in, I, I would find somewhere to preach. I was going to preach because God called me to do that. And it was either the jail or nursing home. And that's where we'd go. And there was one place, and it no longer exists now, and I'm glad because it was not a real good place uh, for the elderly to be. But I went to that nursing home, and uh, we were down there, and, and uh, that's the place I had the shoe thrown at me because I was too loud, the, the lady said. And she threw her shoe at me, which I ducked, and my buddy got tickled, and that about ended it all for that day. But there was one elderly man down there, and he would, you could tell he was, you know, he, he didn't have long for this earth. And he was in a wheelchair, and he was just in bad health, terrible health. And every time I would go down there, I would find that man, and I said, Sir, would you not like to give your heart to the Lord? Would you not like to get saved and go to heaven? And him dying, I mean, he, you know, he, he couldn't have had long to live because of his health condition. He would look at me and look right in my eyes and say, Not today. Not today. And people still, they'll reject that, even though they know the truth. <clears throat> and they reject the truth. Now, I don't know what ever happened to the fellow. As far as I know, he never did get right with the Lord. But there's no reason for people to reject the Lord. And yet they do. And, and they don't get saved because, uh, because they listen to the lie of the devil. Then in the last days, many will listen to the lie of the Antichrist and, and be doomed for hell because they will not believe the truth. We see it today, and we'll see it more then. Thank God I'm not going to be here. Amen. But you think of those that you know that are going to be here, except they be born again. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God tonight. Lord, we thank you for your blessings upon our church. God, let us not, Lord, ever be ungrateful to you for what you're doing at the house of God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do this weekend through our drive through Lord, I thank you ahead of time for what you're going to do in our Sunday morning service. Bless us together, I pray. God, I pray that you keep us in fellowship with thee. God, keep the devil off of us. Lord, I know he'll try every way he can to stir up uh, something to break this fellowship. But I pray, God, that we be, uh, Lord, uh, have our eyes open, and Lord, and know when the devil's trying something. And God, we pray that you'd rebuke him. And uh, Lord, dear Jesus, and we plead the blood over that. Help us tonight. Help us we go our way, God. And Lord, help us this year, Lord, this season, that we would center our attention on why we have Christmas. And Lord, it's all because of you. Thank you, Lord, now for all you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right.